Yo, what's up everybody? It's your boy Floss, back again with another video. And today we're gonna do the real review for the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus. Now, if you're new to my channel, when I say real review, I'm not trying to say that anybody else's review is fake. No, when I say real review, that means I'm a real consumer. I buy these phones with my money. Nobody's paying me to make this video. If I say something is hot, that means it's hot. If I say I don't like it, that means I really don't like it. Now, y'all know my motto, I only pledge allegiance to the hotness. Now, I'm gonna try to make this video as quick as I can, so let's get right into it. First things first, shout out to White Shoes, back in the building. White shoes. shoes, calm down. Now let me start off by answering the two questions everybody been asking me all week. Number one, if you got a Galaxy S9 or a Galaxy S9 Plus, should you upgrade and get the Galaxy S10 or the Galaxy S10 Plus? And the answer is no. Now if you got a Galaxy S8 or an S7 or an S6, yes, yeah, about that time for an upgrade. But if you already got the Galaxy S9 or the S9 Plus, you don't need an upgrade. Now, realistically, let me tell you what's the difference. Now, we're not talking about processor versus processor, GPU versus GPU, specs on paper. Realistically, the only thing you're going to notice is you're getting the on-screen fingerprint sensor, reverse wireless charging, and the wide-angle camera. Other than that, it's the same phone. And on a side note, you're actually losing two features. You're losing the physical fingerprint sensor, and you're losing the security of the iris scanner. So keep that in mind. If you got a Galaxy S9 or an S9 Plus, day-to-day -day usage, the phones are gonna feel exactly the same. Save your money, wait for the next one. Next question. You got a Galaxy Note 9. Should you upgrade and get the Galaxy S10 Plus? And the answer is no. Now chances are, if you bought a Galaxy Note, you team Note, you team S Pen, you need that S Pen to survive, it's a no-brainer. All right, wait for the Galaxy Note 10. Now, I heard through the grapevine, don't quote me on this, but I heard the Galaxy Note 10 might have a camera on the S Pen. We're talking new innovative features right there. Save your money, wait for the next version. Now, just like any other phone that I review, there's always gonna be some things that I don't like, so let's talk about those first. Number one, the price. Now, the maximum price for this Galaxy S10 Plus ceramic back, one terabyte, you're looking at 1,700 bucks. 1700 bucks let's all say it together the price is too goddamn high all right samsung i need y'all to calm down now look i'm not co-signing on no thousand dollar phones y'all see my channel you see all the phones that i review in this day and age you don't need to spend a thousand bucks for a quality flagship phone but here's the but if you are going to spend over a thousand bucks this is the phone that you want to get now, just because I don't like the price doesn't mean it's not worth it. When you go out and you get that lobster dinner, <laughs> when you're eating that lobster, it's going to be the best meal of your life. When you get the bill, you're not going to like that bill. But does that mean you don't like the food? Of course not. You got to pay to play. Now, there's only a couple of phones that I spent over a thousand bucks for that I didn't cry about later. And this is one of them. Galaxy S10. You got the uh, Note 9. iPhone XS Max. Huawei Mate 20 Pro. If you're gonna spend a thousand bucks for a phone, this is what you want. But I can't co-sign that. All right. Realistically, if I was your dad, I would tell you, don't buy this. Buy something else. Get a OnePlus. If your money ain't right, get something else. Now, if you like the latest and greatest, do your thing. All right. So I'm not feeling the price. Next, no notification LED. What does that mean? Here's your Galaxy Note 9. Keep your eye on the left corner. You see that notification LED? That is now officially gone. No notification LED. Now, is that a deal breaker? Of course not. But for me, I like that. Now, in the middle of the night when I got my phone on my wireless desktop charger and I'm texting and I'm waiting for that response and I'm taking a little nap in between messages, when I glance over and look at my phone and I see that light blinking, I know it's time to respond. Now, when you don't have the notification LED, you're gonna be depending on your always on display you're not gonna be able to see that from across the room. And the same thing, when you put your phone in a charger, if your charger doesn't have that little light that lights up, you might not even know if your phone's charging. Sometimes you put your phone in a charger, you walk past it in the, in the middle of the night, and you move it a little bit, now it's not even charging. You wake up in the morning and your phone's on 30%. Hold this L. All right, so no notification LED, I don't like that. Next, no flash in wide angle mode. Now I'm gonna talk about the wide angle camera in a minute. That is one of the dopest features of this phone, 
but when you use wide angle lens, you lose your flash. Now, I found out this the hard way. I went out to dinner the other night, had the whole family. It's time for the end of the night group picture. It's not too many times where I got my brothers and my sisters and my nieces and nephews all in the same area. So we get in a little group picture. It's nighttime in front of the restaurant. I put it in wide angle lens. I'm like, let me take the picture. I got wide angle lens. Pull out the wide angle lens. It's a little bit dark. I go to activate the flash. The flash is grayed out. No, wide, no, no flash on the wide angle. I don't like that. All right, now, is that a deal breaker? Of course not. Next, no stabilization when you're shooting 4K video. Now, that could be a deal breaker for some people, especially if you're using your iPhone and then you come over to this phone, you're going to lose that stabilization when you're shooting your 4K video. Now, I'm going to show you all a video test. Right now, shout out to Apple. They still got the best stabilization in the game. The stabilization on this in 1080 is pretty good. It's not Apple, but it's pretty good. But to make it worse, no stabilization when you're shooting 4K video. Now me, I'm using a gimbal. I see y'all seen the DJI joint that I use, but a lot of people don't like walking around with a big gimbal. You just want to pull your phone out of your pocket and shoot some 4K video. You better have steady hands. No stabilization. I don't like that. Next, no iris sensor. Now for me, I don't really like this at all. If you had your Galaxy S9, S9 Plus, or your Note, you understand how dope the iris sensor is. It's secure. It's not face unlock, it's secure. There's nobody gonna take a picture of your face and open it up using your iris sensor. This way you can use Samsung Pay, you can use your Google Pay, whatever pay services you use, you can set it up with your iris sensor. You can't do that anymore with this. Everything is fingerprint sensors and pins. Now on a side note, a lot of people been uh, getting on me for my little Instagram post. I'll pull it up real quick. The whole controversy with the face unlock on this phone. Now face unlock, I'm not even gonna mention that as something that I don't like because I actually do like it. Anybody that uses face unlock on this phone, you have to know one thing. It's not about security, it's about convenience. Look at it like this. It's just like smart lock. If you activate smart lock on your phone, like I use all the time, when I get to my office, I turn on smart lock. So as long as I'm in my office, my phone is unlocked. That's a convenience feature. It's not a security feature. So if I go to the bathroom and somebody comes to my office, they can just pick up my phone and unlock it. Smart lock is for convenience, not security. It's the same thing with the face unlock on this phone. It's for convenience, it's not for security. And let me show you what I'm talking about real quick. Now, <laughs> I, I posted this on Instagram. Y'all can read it for yourself. It even tells you, all right, this is not a glitch. It even tells you that when you activate face unlock, somebody might be able to use a picture. This is not anything new. Now, I also posted this picture because we've been going through this on Android. Look at the date on this, 2011. When I did the Samsung Galaxy Nexus, somebody told me that you can unlock it with your face. I made a little video on that, 2011. At that time, that was a glitch. But Samsung fessed up and they said, look, we're not trying to make this a security feature. It's a convenience feature. All right, so if you're out there living a the scumbag life, do not use face unlock. Do not use your fingerprint sensor. All right, if you live in a scumbag life, you need to have a pin or a pattern and something crazy. Let's keep it moving. All right, so no iris sensor. I don't like that. You're losing some facial security uh, software. I don't like that. Next, the power button is too high. Now check this out. This is how I normally hold the phone. I cannot reach the power button. I gotta really stretch. So if you're using your phone, say you're just chilling. All right, let's, let's turn this on. Say you're just chilling. Let me make sure I don't got any thoughtness. All right, say you're just chilling, you're using your phone and somebody pops up over your shoulder. You wanna quickly turn the power button off. If you're just holding it like this, you can't reach it. So now you're on the gram, checking out the buns. Here come your shorty coming back from the bathroom. You gotta reach up, hit that power button. Hey, what's up? The power button is up just a little bit too high. Now that's not a deal breaker, it's just something that I don't like. Next, the curved display. Now when these curved displays first came out, it was nice, it was innovative, curved glass, everybody wanted one, you couldn't wait to feel it and touch it, yeah, it was dope. But nowadays, the curved display, especially if it doesn't really serve any purpose, why do it? All it does is get on your nerves. And this is part of the reason why I can understand why a lot of people would like to have the Galaxy S10e as opposed to the S10 and the S10 Plus, not only because of the price difference, it's because of this curved display. Now let me show you what I'm talking about. Let me uh, turn this on real quick. Check this out. 
Now, if I'm going like this, Sam, this happens to me all the time. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pull up an app, but I, I, I hold the phone like this. A lot of times I'll end up touching the, touching the display. Hold up, <laughs> I'll end up touching the display while I'm holding the phone like this, and then when I start swiping, I'm like, oh well, here we go, Samsung lagging out. I'm thinking it's lag, but it's actually not lag. It's me touching the display. So the curved display. It's had its time, all right? It looks nice, it does look beautiful when you get that edge light in, when you get your messages, it does look nice. But I'd rather have, take it back to a just straight flat display. All right, I'm not really feeling the curved display that much. That time came and went. Now, y'all know they call me Petty Roosevelt, so there's a couple of other petty things I gotta talk about. Number one, no IR blaster. Now, of course, everybody's gonna say, oh, who cares about the IR blaster, that's a gimmick. I care. I care, and anybody that's used a Huawei phone or a Xiaomi phone in the last couple of months, you know what I'm talking about. IR Blaster is not a gimmick. And Samsung, this is why I'm even bringing this up, because Samsung used to be one of the pioneers of the IR Blaster. You remember the smart remote app? Remember how dope it was when you had your IR Blaster? You come in the house in the summertime, turn in your air conditioner, using the IR Blaster. You're sitting in the waiting room at the doctor's office, turn the TV off, turn the channel, you go to the gym, and they playing Fox News or MSNBC, and you want to check out the game, turn the channel. IR Blaster, Samsung, please. All right, I need everybody to throw that hashtag in the comment section. Hashtag, bring back the IR Blaster. Now, one thing I will say about Samsung, they do listen to the customers. All right, we the customers, we the consumers, we all got to lock arms together and unite and ask for this. We want the IR Blaster. Now, we can't even say LG used to do it, HCC used to do it. Who cares? Nobody does it anymore. As long as there's one company, Huawei, as long as there's one company still doing it, this is going to be one of my petty gripes. Next, phone color choices. Now, here's something that I just don't like, and it really doesn't make any sense. When you come out with a phone, uh, you got the prism white, prism black, you got the, um, the canary yellow, flamingo pink, all of these vibrant colors. But then when it's time to buy one, all right, now I got a thousand bucks, I'm ready to drop it on the Samsung phone, I go to SamsungUSA.com, and I only got four choices available. Now if I want ceramic white or ceramic back, uh, black, I gotta turn around and drop almost another G. If I want canary yellow or the prism green, I can't get it. Why do that? Why do that? Maybe, maybe I'm a lady, and maybe I maybe one of my, uh, maybe like you're a girl or something, <coughs> or something. Maybe a lady. Let's just leave it like that. Maybe a lady wants to buy the canary yellow that lives in Brooklyn. She can't get that, so now she got to go with flamingo pink, prism white. Maybe she didn't want that, and you know what? Maybe I'll pass on the Galaxy phone. I'll just go and get an iPhone. They got the iPhone XR and yellow. Let me go and get that. Samsung, you just lost the sale because of the colors. Why do that? Bring out all of the colors at the same time. Now, when Apple starts doing something, you know, it's time for you to do it. Now, I could have had that same gripe with Apple. Y'all remember the product reds? They always came out later. We can't even do that anymore because with the iPhone XR, they brought out all the colors at once. So this way, if you like red, you like blue, you like green, whatever color you, you, you like, you could get it that day. Samsung, y'all need to jump on that bandwagon, bring out all your colors on day one launch. Next, the white cables. Now, I'm getting tired of this. All right, now, this is petty. This is petty, but I don't like white cables with your phone. It's the same way you buy a TV. All right, it's not going to have a white cable because that's going to be behind your, your desk or your entertainment center or whatever. It's going to get dirty. You ever got in the car with somebody and said, oh, you got a phone charger? And they pull out that white charger and it's all dirty and beat up looking. You have the same black charger that's just as dirty and beat up, but it doesn't look like that. If you got a nice desktop setup, look at this right here. You got your wires. Now this one I kept pretty clean, but you could already see this one is getting dirty. It just looks whack. It just looks whack. Now I know somebody's gonna say, yeah, if you get the ceramic black, you get the uh, black wires. <sighs> Ain't nobody spending 1700 bucks just to get black wires. Right? That should have been standard. Black wires on all of the phones. They used to do that. Now they came out with this white shit. I don't like that. I don't like that. Next. The phone for me is just a little too light. Now this is ultra petty, nothing to do with the build quality. The phone just feels a little bit too light. Now there's an easy way to solve this. Get one of these. Now this is my favorite case so far, the Ghost Tech Atomic Slim. This case has aluminum trim on the side. This is the same case I'm using on my S10e and my S10. Aluminum trim, 
you drop this on. All right, let's exit out of that thoughtness. Check this out. Now, this, this actually solves two problems. It gets rid of the curved display. I right, so you're getting less accidental touches. And it gives the phone some weight. You can still see the beautiful prism white on the back. But now look at this. You get an actual button. So now you can feel that power button a little bit better. It's more pronounced. This is just a dope case. It just adds that extra little bit of thickness that uh, gets rid of one, of one of my gripes. Phone is a little too light. One more thing. Now, this is my last gripe. The animations. The animations on this phone, they're just a little bit too slow. When you have slow animations, that tends to make you think that the phone is lagging. It's not really lagging. It's just slow animations. So look at this. All right, so let's do this a couple of times. Here's your fingerprint sensor. Now, of course, I already went to developer options. I turned the window transitions, animation scales. Everything is on zero. So if I left it to the stock way, it would have been even slower. Animations on this is just a little slow. Sometimes you go to big speed, it might glitch a little. I'm not calling it lag. All right, I'm not going to call it lag. I'm just going to call it slow animations. All right, animations a little bit too slow. Not really feeling that. Now, that's it for everything that I don't like. Now let's get into everything that I do like. And on a side note, it might sound like I'm rambling, but y'all know I don't got no script. I'm just going off the top of my head. It's like me talking to you. I'm giving y'all a review the same way I would give to one of my friends. If they ask me, what do I like about the Galaxy S10? Let me tell you. Number one, the build quality. Now, although it does feel a little bit too light, it's a solid build. I right, solid build quality on this. Everything feels premium. If you drop a thousand bucks on this, you're gonna like it. Now, if you drop a little bit more for the ceramic one, the ceramic one does give you a little bit of extra weight. Is it worth that extra price? Of course not. But it does feel good. This phone definitely feels good in the hands. Ladies, you know the procedures. All right, so the build quality on this is excellent. White shoes, I need you to scoot, scoot. All right, scoot, scoot. Next. The phone is water resistant. Now it's almost summertime out here. Time to get ready to go back to the beach, back to the pool. No waterproof case necessary. So when you're rocking your Galaxy S10 or your S10 Plus, your S10e, you're taking those pictures by the beach. Somebody pick you up and they're ready to dunk you in the water. You ain't got to start crying. Oh, wait, let me put my phone down. You ain't got to do that. You can jump right in the water with this and rock out. Water resistance. All right, that's part of the reason you're spending all this money. I know somebody's going to say, oh, yeah, for a thousand bucks, I'd rather get a OnePlus 6T. You could do that if you want, but part of the reason you're paying a thousand bucks is you're getting water resistance, you're getting dual speakers, you're getting wireless charge, you're getting Quad HD display. All of those things I just named, you're not going to find on your OnePlus 6. So add a buck for each one. That's going to compensate you for the price. Next, headphone jack. Headphone jack. We always got to say it three times. Headphone jack. This is important. Now, a lot of people are going to say, I don't care about headphone jack. 90% of the headphones that I use are wireless headphones. And that's kind of true. But you ask anybody that's, I got to do my ear quotes, an audiophile, ask any audiophile, do they need a headphone jack? And they're going to say, yeah. If you got real quality headphones and you want that quality sound, you can only get that from wired headphones. So why have to walk around with a dongle? How hard is it to just leave a headphone jack? If Samsung could do it, Apple could do it, HTC could do it, everybody else should be doing this. Bring it back to the headphone jack days. All right, certain fads, they come and go. Certain fads don't need to come in at all. This is one of them. Leave the headphone jack exactly where it's at. Next, always on display. Now, Samsung makes one of the best always on displays you're going to find. Look at this. Now, it's hard to see. I'm going to try to focus on this. You got a beautiful picture if you want. Now, some of them are starting to catch up. LG's catching up to the game. But Samsung LR always on displays, they just look bright. You can control the brightness. All right, now, I like to have mine on max brightness. But if you don't want to, you don't need to do that. Always on display with the colorful messages. So as soon as I look over, I see I got a Gmail in red. I got a Facebook. I got eight more if I tap on that. It'll open up my notifications. You see all of them? Always on display on this phone is a major go. All right, my bad, y'all. I was just about to talk about face unlock, then I had to take a phone call. Let's bring it back. Face unlock. Now, the face unlock on this is a go. Check this out. Once you lift up the phone, it's going to bring you to your lock screen. Once I look at it, bang, pops wide open. 
Now this works in the brightest day or the darkest night. All right, either way, it's gonna work. No problems with that. Now, of course, you're gonna lose some of that security from not having the iris sensor. But on the flip side, it's kind of good because the iris sensor sometimes is a little finicky. Sometimes you feel your, feel your eyes looking directly at it just to open it. You're not gonna have that problem with the face unlock. Once you look at the phone in that direction, it's gonna pop right open. I'm feeling that. Next, let's talk about the on-screen fingerprint sensor. Now, there's a lot of controversy behind this. Some people saying you gotta tap it quick for it to pop open. Some people saying you gotta press and hold. There's no right or wrong way to do it. Whatever way you do it and it feels comfortable for you and you get it to work, do it like that. Now me personally, I find myself tapping it like this. Now you see the animation, it's not the fastest in the world, but it does work. Now you can tap it quick if you want. You don't have to press it and hold it. My advice, I said this before, if you can't get your fingerprint sensor to work, set up one like this, one like this, and one like that. Set up three fingers with the same print, it's always gonna work. Uh, you're never gonna have a problem with that. Personally, would I like to have this fingerprint sensor on the back to have a physical button? No, I right, no. I'd rather have it on the front. Honestly, especially if it's gonna work like this. Might not be the fastest in the world, but yeah, I'll take it on the front. Yeah, you see my face unlock corded. See, that, that happens all the time during the day too. When I'm reaching, I'll be reaching to press the fingerprint sensor and my face will register before it even opens up. All right, so the <laughs> shoes, calm down. All right, so the fingerprint sensor, major go. Next, let's talk about the display. Now, let's get a little wipe down for the dramatic effect. Beautiful quad HD display. Now, if you're worrying about those pinhole cameras, use the black wallpaper, you won't even see. The display on this, <laughs> y'all already know. Samsung makes the best displays, and this is one of them right here. Let me pull up a video. Speaking of display, we could check speakers at the same time. Let's see what we got on deck. Let's see, we got the uh, V-Trigger Magnet. Listen to these speakers. Oh, my God. Look at this. Look at this display, though. Craziness, craziness. These gotta be the loudest speakers that I ever heard on any Galaxy phone. Now, if y'all watch my live unboxing that I did when I first got the phone, and I put it next to the Galaxy Note 9, the speakers blow the Note 9 speakers away. Now, even Samsung said the speakers, I think maybe said 30%, 20%, I forgot the exact number. They said the speakers was louder. They wasn't kidding. All right, the speakers are definitely louder. This is how you wanna watch videos. Look at how loud this is. Uh, uh, uh. Woo! Okay. Hold up. Hold up. Maybe Zangief might pull us back. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, headbutt. Oh, he's finished. He's finished. Okay. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry, man. Shout out to FGC, man. I can't, it's hard for me to just turn them on and turn them back off. Anyway, the display on this is so vibrant and beautiful. You're gonna love it. And the speakers, the speakers. Now, me, when I'm buying a flagship phone that's gonna go in my rotation, one of my key things that I check off on the checklist is speakers. It gotta have dual speakers, but not only dual speakers, dual speakers that sound good. All right, now there's plenty of phones that have dual speakers. That's just two speakers. Just because it says dual speakers don't mean they sound good. These speakers sound incredible. I right, put it next to your iPhone XS Max, put it next to your Galaxy Note 9, even put it next to your Razer phone too. With them big giant speaker grills on the front, this phone shines. All right, so the speakers on this, no joke. Next, now you see I keep getting these little pop-ups. I like these little pop-ups right here. Oh, I get them for notifications too. Next time I get one, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Next, let's talk about the battery. Battery life on this, 4,100 milliamp battery easily will last you an eight hour workday. Now, is it gonna last you a 16 hour workday? No, no. Now, I'm a heavy user. I don't do screen on time tests anymore because that's pretty silly. If I'm gonna do a screen on, if I'm sitting somewhere with the screen on for four hours straight, chances are I'm sitting in an office, I'm sitting on a plane, I'm sitting somewhere where I gotta charge it. So I'll just charge it up. 
Screen on time, I really don't do those tests anymore. I just do day-to-day uh, -day battery tests. So I wake up at 9 o'clock in the morning, leave the house at 9.30, and when I get home at 7.30, 8 o'clock at night, I check and see how much battery I got left. Now with this phone, using that same matrix, <laughs> I'm sorry, using that same scale, right? I leave at 9 o'clock, I get home at 7.30, 8 o'clock at night, my battery might be on 30%. 20%. Now, this is heavy use with maximum brightness douchebag status. All right, now, sometimes if I notice my battery draining too much, I might tone it down a little bit. But chances are, I tend to leave this phone on max brightness. The battery life is excellent. This is easily your 9 to 5 phone. If you don't use your phone heavy at work, you're not going to have a problem. You can rock this all day and go to your after work drink party and still have battery left. But keep in mind, you got quick charge. Now, this is not the quickest quick charge in the world, but it does charge up pretty fast. It's definitely a shit shower shave phone. You get home, your battery's on 40%. Plug it in, go take a dump, shave, eat your ramen noodles. When you're heading back out the door, you're going to be at 75, 80%. So the quick charge does work. Battery life, pretty good. Next, the camera. Now, this is one of the things that I love about the Galaxy phones, which I've always loved. The cameras, the camera on this phone is, I'm not going to say it's the best. It's not going to, I'm not going to say it's the best. It's top three. The camera on this phone is top three. Matter of fact, I say top five. In my book, I, we talking about my book right here. In my book, you got the Galaxy, the iPhone 10s Max. You got the Huawei Mate 20 Pro. Let's see, you got the, those are my three favorite phones right there. So I would say this is definitely, how can I rank this? Y'all putting me on the spot right here. Okay, I would rank this as number two. iPhone, for me, still got my favorite camera, iPhone. Number two, I put the Galaxy. And number three, I put the Huawei Mate 20 Pro. The AI scene selection is ridiculous. But this phone right here, the camera, let me show you something real quick. Now, you got all your different modes. You got your Instagram mode. So, say I want to take a picture and drop it straight to the gram. I want to do a little Galaxy Flex. I take it with Instagram. Brings me right to my Instagram. And I can just drop this right to my story. Bong. Oh, look, somebody somebody just got a, somebody just got the, uh, let's see, Galaxy S10 Plus, Prism White. Let me go ahead and like that. All right, shout out to Melly Mel, Prism White. We twins, we twins. Anyway, let's bring it back to the camera. All right, so you got your food mode. You got panoramic pro, pro mode. You got live focus. Now, live focus. The live focus on this camera is so dope. One of the best effects, if you never tried it yet, go to your phone, go to live focus, hit the last one, color point, put it all the way up to max. Now I'll show you some pictures in a second. Oh, real quick, before I forget, before I forget, I'll take it back to the camera in a second. A lot of people have been asking me about video lock screen. All right, now this is not a wallpaper. This is just me driving through the tunnel. You could do this too. All right, you get in your car, just make a little video. Once you finish the video, hit those three dots on the top and assign it to wallpaper. Doesn't have to be you driving in the car. It could be you playing with your cat. It could be you walking, uh, you know, walking down the beach, holding hands, eating sunflower seeds. Do whatever you want. Set it as your lock screen wallpaper. It's going to look dope. Back to the camera. All right, so you got all your different live uh, focus modes. You got video, slow motion, super slow motion, and hyperlapse. And that's pretty much it. Now, check this out. This is the main thing why I reason. <laughs> Let me rephrase that. This is the main reason, not the main thing. The main reason why I love this camera so much, that wide angle lens. Look at that. Now, here's regular. Here's extreme close up. Look at the wide angle without even moving my hands. Without even moving my hands. Now, you got your AR emojis and you got your Bixby vision and all that. We don't need to cover that. I'm gonna show y'all my regular camera reel. Whenever I do a new phone and I do the camera test, I just take it with me for the day and take some photos. So I'm just gonna breeze through and show y'all the photos that I took. All right, let me start from the beginning. Now there's no specific order. It's just gonna be right from the beginning. Here we go. Okay, so first, now this is just point and shoot. Nice bottle of Hennessy. Point and shoot status, sick. Here's another point and shoot. This is me staying at this little Airbnb. A little live focus. Look how the background is kind of blurry. Close up on that BJ's. Now, here's a wide angle lens. Look at that. Beautiful. Now, this is that live focus mode. It's hard to see in this picture, but you notice everything is color 
and the dash, the background is black and white. A seamless transition. I got a better one I'll show you in a second. All right, now look at this. This is wide angle mode. You're not gonna get a picture like this inside of your car unless you're sitting in the back seat. This is a wide angle picture and also a night shot mode. All right, now there's no official night mode like that, but you use the scene selection that's gonna make your picture look nice and the night, cam uh, night camera is pretty good. Now watch the super slow motion. Check this out, I'm gonna play the video. Super slow motion. You can turn that cheesy music off if you want. That is pretty sick. Now, it's, it's sick because if you think about it, go home and take some money and flip it like that and try to get it to look this slow. It's never going to happen. All right, so the super slow motion is dope. Now, here's another one. All right, <laughs> this little, you see the RX. All right, I got a prescription. I got glaucoma. Same thing. You see everything is green. Background is black and white. You can see a little color from the mouse. That's sick. Now, this is portrait mode using the front-facing camera. In the daytime, I'm just chilling. Looking like a douche. Again, just here thinking about some stuff, you know. Thinking about some new scams, you know. <laughs> you know how that go? All right, check this out. Now, here's in the gym. This is in the gym. This is just a regular point and shoot. Now, watch what happens. I'm not going to move my hand. I'm going to put on wide angle. Look at the difference. You see the ramp to go up the stairs? You see all that other stuff? You can't even see that in this picture. You want a wide angle shot? Press one button and look at the difference. Here's your wide angle. Now this is, uh, <laughs> shout out to my man Terry Warfield, all right? Got the Terry Warfield sleeves right there in the gym. Now how we do, all right? Size medium shirts. Let's go. More gym pictures, point and shoot, just look real nice. Check this out. Again, another super slow motion. Look at that. Look at that water cascading. All right, that music is mad cheesy though. That music is mad cheesy. You can add your own music if you want, but that looks so dope, man. I'm, I'm telling you, you're gonna have a lot of fun with that slow motion camera. Look, uh, look at that. Think of all the possibilities, all the fun you can have. Now look at this one. This is another live photo, uh, live focus mode. Notice the whole back, everything is black and white. All right, everything is black and white, but all the gauges, iPhone, everything else is in color. But everything else is in the back, black and white. Now, I took a selfie like this. You'll, you'll see it better. Now, y'all know, whenever I do my night shot test, I stand in front of the same spot and take a picture of the supermarket. Looks beautiful. Look at wide angle. Come on, look at this. This is regular. I'm just standing. I'm about to walk right into the supermarket. I hit wide angle. Look at the difference. Almost looks like a panoramic shot. Again, just a regular night shot. Now this is uh in the supermarket. Okay, all them nice, beautiful, vibrant colors. Okay, here we go. Now here's my video test. Y'all know when I do the video test, I walk around the store and take a video. Here's what I wanted to show y'all. Let me pull up my iPhone real quick. I did the same video with this phone and with the iPhone. Okay, so here we go. Let's turn the volume down. Here's the same video. Notice the difference in stabilization. Now the stabilization on this, this is not 4K, the 1080p, this is 4K on the iPhone. You can see the difference in screen size though. Look at the iPhone, now I'm putting top to top to top, look how much more screen you got with the Galaxy. Now just look closely, look at, look, I'm just walking up and down the aisle. Both of these phones have incredible stabilization. Y'all watched the last couple of videos I did. It seemed like the phone was shaking. Now look at the Galaxy. Super smooth. Almost as smooth as the iPhone. Right now the iPhone still got the best stabilization in the game though. It really does. All right, I posted that picture to Instagram. I'm like, why everybody hitting me up? All right, let me keep it moving. All right, now, I did a, I did a couple of the same ones. Now this is um one of those live focus modes. All right, iPhone, calm down in the back. You see I added the circular pattern in the back. That's kind of cool. You see it more right there. The whole background is like circular blurred. Now look at this. This is that one I was talking about, color print. You see the barbecue sauce? <laughs> black and black, barbecue sauce got a color. Everything else is black and white. All right. Craft, craft brand barbecue sauce, you know. 
It is what it is. These are just regular pictures. See how dope that looks. Now check this out. Here's some ramen noodles, right? Ramen, ramen, ramen noodles, ramen noodles, cheddar cheese, whatever you want to call it. Now I added the bokeh, the bokeh effect, portrait mode. Look at the blurriness in the background. You see right now, you can see the whole aisles. You see everything. Now the background got a little bit more blurry. Now I'm going to add maximum bokeh, all right? Maximum bokeh, look at the background. Super blurry. All right, that's max. Now check this out. This is just me, all right? Holding some Velveeta cheese. I y'all y'all think I'm out here balling. This is what I be eating for dinner, man. Velveeta cheese. Times is hard, bro. Now look at this one. Now this is the same one. Same picture. Look at the background effect. Black and white. I'm in color. You can't really see any trace. It just does it so flawlessly. I right, trying to look hardcore whilst holding some Velveeta cheese. I right, Kool-Aid on deck, cat food. Here's another night shot. All right, I'll get this the right way. Nice shot. I have to go to the credit union, of course. Look at this. Regular. You can barely see the flagpole. Look at wide angle. You can see the flag. You can even see the next building. This one, you can't even see another building. You can't see the flagpole. Now you see the flag and a whole nother building. Wide angle is the truth. All right, this is ATM status. Here's another one. Portrait mode using the front camera. Black and white on the back. Me in the front. And of course, I had to do one for my gearheads. Let's go. Oh, they shooting. Here we go. Max Power. Okay, here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. Engage. Engage warp drive. Here it comes. Mm. Now this is actually I know I, I know I love those sounds This is actually wide angle video It's the same thing when you're doing your video You could do regular or wide angle But when you do wide angle You can't use the flash So to sum that up To sum that up Part of that thousand bucks that you're spending on this phone Is the camera When you buy this phone You're going to be taking pictures Even if you don't like taking a lot of pictures you're gonna be taking pictures with this camera because it's just it's just so much fun. It's so much fun. Play with that black and white filter. Go go crazy with that. Next, multitasking. Now, of course, this is the multitasking beast. I don't need to go through all of the multitasking features, but I'll show you one. Say I'm on YouTube, right? I could just go to YouTube. I can open this up in a split screen window. Let's see what. Let, oh, I, I split it too much. Let's do that again. Let's go to YouTube. Matter of fact, let's open this up in a pop-up window. All right, let's minimize that. Now, I got it as a little floating pop-up window. So now if I want to, I could go to Facebook. All right, let's exit out of that. Say I'm on Facebook. I want to take it back to YouTube. Now I'm on YouTube. Now, if I want to, I can make the Facebook. We can open the split screen. All right. Let's, um, let's add Google Chrome. And we'll... Minimize this one. All right. So now, Facebook and Chrome at the same time. Let's exit out of YouTube. Close all of these. <laughs> you get the idea. I don't have to go through this over. Y'all, y'all already know. You got maximum multitasking on this. With the main thing is no lag. All right. Main thing no lag. Okay, I didn't press the right button. No lag. So you got multitasking on deck. Let's check the web browsing speeds. Go to apple.com. Opening web page. Look how fast this is. No lag. There's your full website. And of course, now I, I, I'm still trying to get the hang of this. I, I, I liked it better when you could just hold down the multitasking button. I, I, I'm not really feeling this one too much. Because then there's, there's more steps you got to do. I just got to get used to it. Whatever. Multitasking is a go. My bad, y'all. I had to take another phone call. It's a little bit busy tonight, so bear with me. Next up, edge panels. Now, I love using the edge panels, and I always tell people, if you got a Galaxy phone, you got to use the edge panels. All right, you might think it's a gimmick. You're never going to really appreciate it if you don't use it. You got to get in the habit of using all of these features. So here's what I got on mine. 
I keep a weather. All right, now you can edit this, put as many as you want. I keep a weather edge. I keep reminders. Nothing set right now. Got my apps edge. So say I'm doing something, I wanna quickly go to Instagram, press one button, take it right over to Instagram, press one button, take it right over to Facebook. I keep a people edge, all of the people I contact the most. If I want, press one button, make a phone call, or send them a text. You got smart select, I'll show you that in a second. And you got your task edge. So if I want to, I could quickly take a photo, record a voice note, see my recent calls, compose an email, go to a time or a stopwatch, do whatever I do. So here's how you use the uh, smart select. Let's make a quick animated GIF. I right, so say I'm on that same Street Fighter video. Let's open up Smart Select. Let's go to Animation. All right, let's bring this back up. All right, so we just move this right to the middle. And we hit Record. Now you get up to 15 seconds. You don't get sound. All right, no sound. So I hit Stop. Here's my animated GIF. Now, of course, there's not going to be any sound playing, but I could quickly send this as an email. I could send it as a text message. Post it on the thread. Make your own gifts. Fellas, use your imagination. Go crazy. All right, so I'm definitely feeling that. Let me exit out of all of this. All right, so that's your edges. Use those or lose those. <laughs> Next, let's take it over to wireless charge. Now, of course, wireless charge is a dope feature, but one of the better features about wireless charge on this phone is reverse wireless charge. So I got this set as number one because I use it the most. Wireless power share. Let me show you how this works. Let me grab an iPhone, charge up my iPhone. Now that is so sick because not only can I charge up my phones, but say I got one of these, some BNO wireless earbuds, charge them right up. I can take off my Galaxy Watch, place it right on the back, charge that up too. Wireless power sharing is a go. All right? It's not a gimmick. It's not the fastest charge in the world, but it's good enough to charge your headphones, good enough to charge your watch. And if you go to dinner with somebody, like this happens to me all the time, you go to dinner with somebody and their phone is a 1% or 5%, you ain't got to rush through the dinner. Flip your phone over, let them charge their phone up, and rock out. By the end of the dinner, their phone is probably going to be on 20 to 30%. But that's good enough to get them where they got to go. All right, so I'm definitely feeling the wireless power share. And lastly, let's talk about thought protection. Now, everybody been asking me, does this phone have thought protection? Not the same thought protection that you get on your Huawei phones, but you do got your folders, your secure folders. Now, you can see you change the name to whatever you want. I call it Thought Life. So if I want, I got to press the button. Now I got to put in my pin. All right, so let me put in my pin. Hit OK. And here's my Thought Life folders. So I got my gallery, any hidden photos, any <laughs> hidden photos that I want to stash, throw them right in there. Got the calendar, contacts, emails, camera, internet, my files, I right, have all your videos, Samsung Notes, and your Samsung Pass. Now check this out. Once you close your phone and open it back up, you can't press that button and go right back in. You're gonna have to put the pin in. So let's do that again. There's your pin. Now, if you want to, I got to set that this is my thought print. I use my thought print to open it and it'll take me right to my thought life activities. And I exit out. Now, if I do the same thing, I'm not gonna use my thought print. I'm gonna use my regular thumb. Opens up like this. Now let's open it with the thought print one more time and take me right to the thought life folder. So yeah, you do got some thought protection, not the best in the world, but it's there. All right, it's there. If you're living a scumbag life, it's there. Next, now there's two more categories I want to talk about real quick. Everybody been asking me, the floss factor. What's the floss factor on this phone? And what does that mean? That means you pull out your Galaxy S10, somebody comes out with a Galaxy Note 9, somebody comes out with an iPhone XS Max, somebody got an HTC U12, somebody got any phone that's out right now, where do you fit in? Are you on top of the food chain looking like a boss or you're in the bottom of the food chain looking like a peasant? Well, with your Galaxy S10, S10 Plus, the floss factor on this, I'm going to put an actual number. On a scale of 1 to 10, I give the number on this a solid 8. All right? When everybody sees those vertical cameras on the back, uh, vertical, <laughs> horizontal cameras on the back in that line uh, set up like that, 
Everybody's going to know this is the new one. All right. There's no fingerprint cut out on the back. This is the new one. All right. When you see that prism white shimmering all over the place, this is the new one. So the flaws factor on this is through the roof. If you get the ceramic back version, everybody knows you some kind of baller. You rich, rich. All right. Do your thing. But here's the thing. Here's the next category. The let me see that factor. What's the let me see that factor on this phone? And that is pretty slim. All right, when you pull out your Galaxy S10, your S10 Plus, your S10e, nobody's going to say, yo, let me see that. No one's going to say that. Same thing when you pull out your iPhone XS Max. Nobody's going to say, oh, that's an iPhone XS Max. Let me see that. Nobody cares. Everybody's seen these already. These phones, they have no let me see that factor. Now, as of right now, the phone that I has the most let me see that factor in my whole arsenal is this phone right here. Now, I had it, I had it powered off. You see, it's all dirty because I was going crazy in the stream. This phone with the dual displays. Let me show you how that looks. Let me wipe it down and power it up. All right, check this out. Now, this is the definition of a let me see that phone. Every single time I pull this phone out, somebody says, let me see that. Because all I got to do is press these two buttons together and flip it to the back. And the first thing somebody's gonna say is let me see that. Now you sitting at home watching this, you just said that to yourself. You said, wait a minute, do that again, bro. I heard you, I'll do it again. Press both buttons together, flip it over. Now these are two functional displays. So here's Instagram. I could be flowing through the gram. Let's hit those buttons. Take it back over. I'm still using Instagram. Hit those buttons, back over. That's the let me see that factor. This phone is the let me see that phone. These ain't. Now, on a side note, I know everybody's going to say, oh, who cares about the dual displays? This is when it comes in handy. When I'm getting ready to take a picture, I hit this button and it activates the back display. So now whoever I'm taking a picture of, they can see exactly what they're going to look like. You cannot complain about that feature. You can't call it a gimmick. Anyway, let's wrap this up. All right, so overall, after weighing all the negatives and the positives together, on a scale of 1 to 10, I'm giving the Galaxy S10 Plus a major, major, major go. Pound for pound, feature for feature, this is the best Android phone out right now. Should you buy this phone? The answer is yes. The build quality is excellent. It's water resistant. You got that beautiful quad HD display. Those ridiculously loud speakers. The camera is out of this world. You get expandable memory, great battery life, wireless charge, reverse wireless charge. All of the bells and whistles are attached to this phone. This is a triple major go, white shoes approved. Hit me up in the comments. Let me know what y'all think about this. And if there's anything that I didn't cover, I'll answer it in the comments section. Shout out to everybody rocking with me on Facebook, Foursquare, Twitter, Google+. Shout out to all the Google gangsters. I see y'all holding down that Facebook page. Shout out to everybody hitting me up on Voxer. And a special shout out to everybody rocking with me on Instagram. Y'all know that's where I'm at full time, 100% full throttle. And a special shout out to everybody rocking with the new stream on Sundays. Y'all already know, stream gangsters on deck. Get your drinks ready. No meat boys allowed. Oh yeah, special shout out to everybody following me on Snapchat, Flossy underscore Carter, that's where I'm at. And a special shout out to the notification squad, I see y'all in the comment section early, hashtag salute. Oh yeah, one more thing, I almost forgot. Fellas, ladies, say it with me. All y'all haters, all y'all trolls. Close your eyes and picture me rolling. It's your boy Floss, I'm out. Deuces. Enterprise, Spock here. Spock, one to beam up. Captain. Enterprise situation where everybody in the world uses technology and if you're gonna buy some of that technology you gotta understand certain things subscribe to Flossy Carter 
It does reviews of all the latest technology. The iPhones, the iPads, the Galaxies, the Samsungs, whatever the fuck. The Beats by that Dr. Guy. And he puts his kitty cat in the videos too for you something to look at. You know, I'm an animal lover, so I like that shit. So make sure you hit the subscribe button, the Flossy Carter on the YouTube, the follow button on the Insta face, and the like button on the face look. Because if you don't, we're going to have a fucking problem here. A bad one. Now hit the fucking subscribe button.